Hi, I'm Donnie Wonder. In 2019, I set out on an artistic journey. Hello! <laughs> Hello, Hollywood Studios! My name is Donnie Wonder, and I've got a pitch for you. Here we go. Are you rolling? I made a documentary about the murder of artist David Hackney. Oh, that's kind of good, huh? Mm. I am David! The wounds suggest a butter knife. It had the potential to be a great film. In the spirit of timeless classics, such as The Jinx, The Makings of a Murderer, or The Staircase, it was set to launch my career. Oh! Donnie, uh, in a lot of ways, this film is a mistake. That's a thought. But the dopes at the studio got their hands on my film and they made a mess of it. I don't watch pitch videos, they're torture. <laughs> but my assistant Jenny watched it, thought it was funny. I watched it. <laughs> and I took on this project immediately. You have my absolute 100% guarantee that Killer Whales will not be a failure. I wanted to see this guy try to make a movie. I bear the sign of Oxymon. Oxymon, Oxymon. I directed the reenactment scenes. <laughs> the way I, I treated Donnie on the set of Killer Whales was a very different man back then. Take your clothes off. He looks like a child. Here, shout out this. They destroyed my movie, and I got tangled up in this, and I'm the butt of the joke. Help me. I'm doing a director's commentary to take back my movie. I'm going to say exactly where the studio went wrong, and you're going to hear my side of the story. You're about to see Killer Whales. this film for three weeks three weeks hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the breeze breezeway productions the breeze where we bring you the latest in independent films and film festival news and we have with us today wyatt bunts here to talk about his film killer whales how are you Wyatt? i'm doing great alex thanks for having me right on uh thanks for coming on the show so tell us a little about killer whales yeah so killer whales is about a naive documentarian this guy who you know, has watched all the true crime docs on Netflix and has this dream that he's going to go out and make his own true crime documentary. Um, but he has no experience filmmaking. He's just a dreamer um, coming to Hollywood. And he finds this unsolved murder case, uh, murder that took place at an open house. And he sets out to solve the, the murder case. But at every step of the way, he encounters uh, roadblocks, the realities of the entertainment industry, and also wacky, strange suspects who are making his life extremely difficult. And the whole um, pursuit sort of goes up in flames. <laughs> yeah, uh, I was able to check out a little bit of the film. And, uh, you know, when it first starts off, you got like an 80s vibe of like the music playing in the background. It's very gritty and that you're looking at the documentary, but then things start to change and shift a little bit. If you can put this film in a type of genre, what would you call it? Yeah, that's always the challenge. But uh, we, we, we have a number of names for it. Uh, it I, I call it a mockumentary murder mystery. Uh, or I've also called it a mock murder mystery or a, a true crime satire. Um, so we, we have a, nub, a number of names for it. It's definitely a mockumentary and it's definitely satirizing the true crime uh, craze. Yeah, yeah. You you mentioned that there was a, like what inspired or at least when the film was being made in the in the movie, the film in the movie that they talked about making a murderer or uh, all those other documentaries about murder cases. And that's what he was looking to do. Um, so my, my next question is about the uh, the script and then how your actors were able to, you know, create their dialogue from what you were shooting in a very free handheld type of sense. How much of this was scripted and how much of this was ad lib? That is a good question. Um... So a lot of this was ad-libbed. Um, we, we knew the information we needed to get out. And often before, say, when, when it's a talking head scene, you know, a mockumentary scene, we, we would say to the actors, and, and we picked actors we knew were great improvisers, and, and we wanted to sort of create a, a nice character playground for these actors to have fun. But before we'd say, here's what you need to get out. Here's the information you need to get out. We'd have some bullet points. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and we'd let them go and, and say it in a way that um, felt natural. 
and made sure we hit those bullet points. But then there were other scenes that were fully scripted. Mm -hmm. uh, it was kind of when we intuitively felt like we needed a script, we would we would have it. Um, and then there was, of course, you know, the whole story was written. We had a script for the whole story, but we went off when we when we thought we had the opportunity to improvise and create some fun freedom. I really wanted it to be a free environment on set. And I know the director, Willow Hamilton, wanted it to be a free environment as well. So what was your relationship with the director? And this seems like every one of you and your cast was very well knit, like people were friends before the beginning yeah. of the filming of this. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, very intuitive. Um, he and I, where Willow and I go back to college, um, we've been working together for six, almost seven years um, and have made some shorts together. And this was our first feature film that we made together. And then a lot of the, the cast is almost entirely friends. Nice. Um, so it was really nice to have that. Family you can vibe. sense that chemistry when you're watching it, that you guys have, have done more than just this film together, that you've definitely had spent time and then enjoyed. The riffing between each other is very comfortable. Nothing seems manufactured. So it was definitely a pleasure to watch. Um, did you have inspiration from things from shows like The Office while you were creating this? Of course, yeah. yeah. Um, I think, you know, I'm I'm always inspired by, you know, the class like Christopher Guest. Uh, mockumentary style, um, you know, best in show and um, and then Rob Reiner's Spinal Tap and stuff like that. Um, but uh, there was one scene in particular that was definitely inspired by The Office and that was the vitamin salesman scene yeah. um, where you see, you know, there's the sign you miss 100% of the shots you don't take, Wayne Gretzky quote. That, that scene, I, rem I was had The Office in my head um, and was definitely inspired by it there. Um, but yeah, a lot of Christopher Guest inspiration um, throughout, of course. Yeah. So uh, <clears throat> what is your your most fond memory of making this film? Uh, you had a lot of funny scenes and skits and characters that you were putting together in this, but do you have one that sticks out that was uh, very true, true and dear to you? Yeah, that that's, a, yes, actually. The very last scene, the very last shot of the movie um, where I'm holding up the a piece of evidence. I'm not going to give away. I'm not no spoilers here, but I'm mm -hmm. I'm holding up a a piece of evidence, and I'm about to go on this, or I'm I'm giving this sort of monologue about the journey of the film, and in real life, the the entire LAPD training unit, like everyone in this LAPD school, <laughs> um, yeah. was jogging in place waiting to run but their captain had told them to wait until they had finished okay. so i'm delivering this monologue to the camera but also to the entire lapd school uh and and then they waited until i finished and then they all ran by and you can see that in the last shot of the film is all the all of these lapd trainees running by so that i that was just a really funny moment um nice. and intense <laughs> it's it's something that they will remember and you will remember because that was that was very nice of the captain to stop that for shooting because you didn't have I like, was people shocked. locking up the street you know so they just everything no. kind of had to be free flowing like you see it a yeah. lot of different things like your static shot in the cafe with the producer coming to meet you and then you know the riff between you and him and and uh it's a wonderful film i've been i've definitely enjoyed uh watching watching it but uh what are your hopes for the the end game of the film for distribution is is it out or can people where can people go to find out more about it yeah so we we did get distribution um with gravitas uh ventures and it is out on uh lots of platforms it's on itunes it's on uh amazon it's on voodoo vimeo youtube google play and the movie is called killer whales and you can find it in all of those places right down well uh shout out to gravitas for for picking it up for distribution and i think that the film was definitely a fun watch so we hope that you're able to check out killer whales on all of those platforms and i want to thank you for stopping by today to talk about it wyatt bunce i definitely enjoyed your film and i wish you the best of luck and success in your future endeavors thank you alex you too appreciate yeah. it